Hey everybody, this is Dennis, and welcome to another episode of the Grounded Reason podcast. Today, Joel and I are going to discuss the recent election of Donald Trump and how that's going to affect cord cutters. Uh, More specifically, how it's going to affect the FCC's net neutrality policies and also their recent rules for ISPs in regard to uh, their customers' privacy and how ISPs have to notify customers um, on how they're going to be using their customers' information. Now, I recommend that you might want to check out um, the episode that we had on October 24th, uh, where we actually covered the positions of uh, you know, President-elect Trump and uh, Secretary Clinton when it comes to their stance on uh, recent FCC decisions in regard to um, open and fair internet, uh, ISP regulations, and things that, you know, people should care about when it comes to the uh, internet, especially if you're a cord cutter uh, like me and many who listen to the show. So we're going to get started in a minute, but uh, first, um, if you're new to the show, this is your first episode, welcome. Um, I recommend checking out the uh, episode I just mentioned uh, on uh, that we did on the 24th on, you know, Mr. Trump's position on, uh, you know, these matters uh, surrounding the internet, net neutrality. If you listened to the show before, you know, you stopped by a few times, you're liking the show, we would really love it if you, you know, hook us up with a five-star review on iTunes. Uh, that really helps us out because, you know, it raises awareness for the show and uh, more people listen and we'll make more episodes. And if you could also maybe hit that subscribe button because that's another way the, the show can get into the iTunes rankings, then more people will see it. And more people will listen. And again, we'll keep making more shows. So review, subscribe, check out that other episode we did a few weeks ago. And I'm just going to start the show now. Today, I want to talk about uh, the recent election, as you know. Yeah, and the repercussions of it are going to have some profound effects on uh, cord cutters. Uh, just the internet in people general. People who like the internet. <laughs> yeah, that whole thing. Yeah, that. So, I mean, uh, President-elect Trump, as, as we actually did an episode on this a couple back, uh, yeah. where we analyzed the internet policies of Trump and uh, President-elect Trump and Secretary Clinton. And uh, if you want to check out, because we're going to talk a bit about net neutrality, the impacts of that, uh, the, the Trump presidency will have on that, and then also the effects that the Trump presidency will have on some other initiatives that the FCC pushed through. Uh, based on um, President-elect Trump's uh, distaste for regulation, I guess is the way to say it. Yeah, that's a polite way of saying it. Yeah, because, I mean, in his, um, his first 100 days... Uh, you were, you mentioned that you were reading that uh, earlier. What he yeah. did in his first hundred days, yeah. and I think it's uh, there's a moratorium on any any yeah. regulations at all, yeah. and then there's like a two for one trade if you want to put yeah, a new one in or something like it's that. It's really weird. It's it's basically the same policy my wife has instituted for any time I want a new book. Oh, okay. I have to like every time I get a new book. Does I that audio book count out. for that too? No, just, it doesn't. So that's why I load up. Oh, that's audio a loophole. You got a loophole. Yeah, I got a loophole. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so basically, what it comes down to is is what they're talking about with the uh, with the regulation uh, cap. There is basically for any new regulation on any particular topic, two existing regulations, presumably on the same topic would need to be uh, cut out. Although it doesn't sound like it is necessarily specific. It's just implied that it would be the same topic. Right. That the two. Um, should we go back and recap the two positions? Well, that's – I was going to do that a bit. And I mean I recommend I, – I mean I recommend listening to that one because it will give you a good idea yeah. of where, you know, our, our new president to be will uh, – stands on a lot of this stuff when it comes to, uh, you know, freedom of the internet, uh, cable, regu- uh, ISP regulation, uh, broadband access and things like that. But 
I mean, uh, basically, Trump's been quoted to say that he wants to eliminate quotes here, eliminate our most intrusive regulations and reform the entire regulatory code. And he singled out net neutrality um, in a tweet, if I recall. Yeah, it was a tweet. And he called it a top down power grab. And he said that uh, it would allow government oversight like government censorship of websites. Now, I mean, in that podcast that we did, you'll kind of get the real, I mean, I, I don't say the real take, but I say our take and most people we, in the tech industry. We take. kind of broke it down a little bit. Yeah. And, and it's, again, you know, it's a commonly held belief about what that statement meant um, amongst, you know, people in the tech industry. Right. Um, you know, it's it's an interpretation of 140 characters, right? Like, so there's only yeah. so much you can do. Right. And that was one of the things that we talked about in that uh, previous podcast was that the, and it's going to be one of the challenges with talking about this in general today, is that the, the stated policy from the incoming Trump administration regarding net neutrality is, is pretty sparse. There's just not a lot. Um, there is a fair amount, but it's one of the things he's actually talked about. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And and uh, also to your point, he has been pretty explicit about the idea of minimizing the amount of regulation in general. So that certainly puts net neutrality in the crosshairs. Yeah, and I I know I mean for a lot of people out there, regulation can be a a, a bad word. But the, the, re- the regulation we're talking about here is specifically this. Basically, the FCC said that ISPs can't block or throttle content at their will. They have to – they can't, you know, pick what content gets throttled or blocked and they have to, you know, just provide an open internet as long as it's not – I think there is a legality clause in there. Like you right. can't be doing anything illegal. Yeah. You know, but – and then there's also no paid prioritization, which basically means – Pay for play. Yeah, yeah. I can't sit there and buy. If I own, you know, a company and I, it's, you know, and it's based off it's an e-commerce site, I can't buy a fast lane that's going to, you know, provide, um, you know, more bandwidth than any other competitor in that same tier. Like, yeah. You can't choke out the competition exactly. by buying up bandwidth. I mean, frankly, that's anti-competitive behavior, right? Like, so right. It, it would run afoul of antitrust regulation really, really quick. Oh, yeah. And you can't, you know, you can't, and also what the fast lane is, what they're really saying is the content. Like, if you have this kind of content, then you have to pay X amount of money. But this content, basically charging based off of what you're sending or doing, which is kind of absurd, because I can sit there, if I don't like what that company does or they're a competitor of mine, I can just charge them more be- because they produce that kind of content and they're sending that content over the line. That's a no-no with this FCC regulation, which is a good thing. Right. I mean, because it just basically promotes, you know, f- it's like f- free open and discussion. open internet. I yeah. mean, is really what we want here. So the – and I mean, we do a much better job of covering all that in the last episode because it is kind of like a, uh in-depth topic. Yeah, that was the dime tour of right. that topic. Exactly. So um, the FCC also passed new privacy rules uh, recently where – You know, um, internet providers have to basically let you know how they're using your personal data that you're passing over the line. Yep. Which is, I think, a good thing. Seems like a good thing to me. Well, those two regulations, I mean, the Congress has been none too happy about and really are sitting on legislation to overturn it. But they won't push it through because they know Obama would veto it. And, and this is where I think um, things get interesting. And, and Dennis, you know, brought this up, and it, it just had not really occurred to me. There's know, two avenues to get rid of this thing. Right. And, and like, you know, the, the obvious one that you're pushing or, or alluding to there is now that um, the Republican – incoming Republican administration also has – uh, the House and the Senate, it, it will be really easy to handle this through the legislative branch, right? And not even have to put this out for comment, right? Right. Like exactly. it would just go through the lawmaking right. process, and the, and they get he gets to a point, you know, 
the next commissioner of the FCC. There's already two people on, because I think it's a five-person board. Board, yes. And there's two people on already that would easily shut this down, uh, net neutrality and the privacy law. So once they install that third person, that's another way to take it out. Um, So if I read the tea leaves... Yeah, I'm thinking that we're in trouble here when it comes well, to you know net neutrality. It's not it's not looking good. It would they'll you know fingers crossed there will be a public outcry about it as it starts to go, um, and it it would be the kind of thing. I'm I'm saying this as much for me as I am anyone else, just to try and comfort myself as I curl up in a ball and cry. But uh, it would be the kind of thing I think we would see coming because even when the the rules are repealed, um, it would be a little while before the ISPs jumped all over it, right? Like, right. there'd be a little bit of time. Yeah, well, I mean, it doesn't take a lot to put that throttle on. Yeah. Why we I care as, well, I mean, you know, you should care if, you know, you value the internet, I feel, but if you're a cord cutter specifically, because all you have to do now is just, I'm going to charge Netflix, you know, so much more money if I'm, yep. I'm, I'm, I'm competing with them. I have internet, I provide internet access, but then I also provide TV content and Netflix is running me out of business, Sling TV. Well, you know, whoever like else, Sony right. with the PlayStation. Yeah. And if I'm, let's say Comcast. Right. Then I'm going to charge them more yep. for those, for that pipe. For so running can, their, their content video. over my pipe. Exactly. So then that cost will go to the customers and all of a sudden all these cable, vi- like alternatives are no longer viable alternatives to cable TV. Yeah. And what's going to end up happening is let's say that those costs get passed along and you know, in all likelihood, uh, let's just use Netflix as an example. You know, they'll eat a little bit of it to not eat away at their customer base too much, but they'll have to pass some of it along. And, you know, some portion of their usership will leave. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. That's just, and, and some portion of that portion will go back to old Comcast, right? And that's what they would be counting on. Exactly. Now... I mean, there's also, see, President-elect Trump, I keep saying that, I almost went with the Mr. Trump, um, he, you never really know where he kind of is on some of this stuff, because if I recall, wasn't he against the Time Warner Comcast merger? I think that is correct. So. Right. And, and this is, this is why the <laughs> legislative option that you were talking about scares me more yeah well i think that that's probably the more likely of the two yeah scenarios although it politico reported that he will be appointing um and i might get this last name wrong uh you might jeffrey asenich that sounds right yeah. okay uh as the point man for the telecom transition yep. so you know that guy has been way like in no, I don't know. I can't. In the pocket's not the right term, but he's basically actually no. It is because he was funded. He was he was funded by net neutrality, uh, uh, Verizon, to uh, you know author some op ed pieces against net neutrality. So yeah, he is kind of. Didn't we actually bring in, him up? No, it wasn't him. It was um that was Ford. I think we were talking. Oh about yeah, that. yeah, it was Ford. But um, so he's basically been a crusader against uh, telecom industry regulation, um, and. You know, to have him as the transition on the transition team, eh, it's worrisome. It is. It, it, so there's basically two avenues. I don't hold out a lot of hope for net neutrality or this privacy law staying on the books too long. No. Um, now, I mean, I, I mean, I would write your congressman or especially Yo, who. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, especially when you think about. You know, in the area of the country where a lot of the votes came from, these are the people that are going to be affected. Oh, yeah. The most by. Yeah, where you have more narrow pipes, it's going to disproportionately affect you. Right. So, and, and I do sound like my boy Ted uh, Stevens, that is, 
when I'm talking about the pipes, pipes and tubes. Yeah. Yes. Well, Ted Stevens is like a staple of the show. Oh, man. Yeah, we do. We need he, to we I, mention him fairly often. I, I <laughs> love me some Ted Stevens. God rest him. So, but, um, um, and the, uh, you know, it's a series of tubes. It is. It is. And if you have... It's not this, a dump truck. Right, no. And if you, a series, series of tubes. Series of tubes. And if you have, some, if you know, if you're getting charged... More for those tubes. If you have a bigger tube than I do. Oh, that sounds bad. Yeah, that sounds uh, good. Uh, but if, you know, you're sitting in, I don't know, somewhere out in, let's say, rural Montana. Okay. And another person sitting in, let's say, Baltimore, right? Mm-hmm. The person in Baltimore has far more options, right, to, to go with. Right. And, and therefore is going to have just better pricing power on it right and so the the people that are going to be most adversely affected are going to be in these small communities that their internet access is going to either ratchet up in cost or just become dramatically slower yeah or if they're using any of these like alternatives to cable those fee- they're going to go up because those companies oh, yeah. are going to be getting charged more you know, because they're going to be basically charging them for the fast lane, well, yeah. which really is kind of not really what's going on. They're really charging them based off of their content. So, but uh, I mean, when this also cuts at another thing, because there's two. I know that they're really going to be looking to cut a lot of uh, programs. Is one of the things that was yep. mentioned in a the lot first of interview. social programs, or and well, one of them is the Connect America Fund and the Rural Utilities Service Program are both, um, like, uh, and and also the broadband technology opportunities program. Um, there are public programs that kind of, that are trying to give broadband access to those areas that just don't have it. Right. And actually as part of, um, secretary Clinton's plan was to leverage those programs to deliver 100% broadband coverage in the U S now, and broadband is 25 MIPS. So the plan was to give 25 MIPS to to everyone, everyone, hundred percent. Which would have been awesome, yeah. Um, and not free. I mean, you got to affordable access, but the access to twenty five, right? Yeah, right. So um, that I don't. There's no even mention of anything like that in the in the hundred days plan. So no, and but the thing that I would say is a concern is that at least throughout the campaign, the campaign, all discretionary spending in the federal budget, which is basically anything outside of the the three big entitlement programs, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, and military spending. So, you know, basically all of the social programs, mm-hmm. uh, all of those have been at one level or another discussed and are under threat. Right. Right. Like, so anything we're talking about could easily get caught up in that as things start getting cut. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're talking, if you compound that, with, you know, the costs of content being more expensive and then the less competition between the ISPs because now they can just kind of – they can corner the market and kind of keep any new startup out at that point. Yeah. Um, then you're talking about costs skyrocketing and there's no, like, you know, public lever to make – access more affordable anymore yeah and honestly something that wouldn't surprise me if this if this happened right like if net neutrality were were reversed it wouldn't surprise me if we saw things like the verizons and the comcasts of the world basically try and run at a loss for a while to choke out the Hulus and so on. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, like, I, I just wouldn't surprise me at all. I mean, Walmart did it for years with various different groups. Amazon's famous for doing it, right? Like, they just run certain products at a really, really tight to negative margin. Well, they just turned a profit for the first time in history, yeah. what, a couple of years ago? Well, that that's largely because they reinvest almost everything. Oh, right, because yeah. they're all about their expansion. <laughs> yeah, but but yes, you're right. And and that's exactly what I, 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 you know, who knows if that's going to happen, but I certainly could see some strong incentive for those companies to do that. Yeah. I mean, I, I think everything we're saying is, you know, it's a pretty straight line view. I mean, yeah. it's not, 
This isn't crazy. It's talk. not wild eyes, <laughs> wild eyed speculation, right? Like it is quite reasonable to expect these things to happen. It's just, you know, will they? I don't know. There's always unforeseen stuff. So another thing just to like bear in mind with this is right now because of the way the market is structured and that uh, internet service providers also have their own content. So Verizon has its channels and Comcast has its channels. Um, There is, you know, this strong incentive for anyone that rivals them for the business of distributing content to throttle throttle their content down. So to like you were saying earlier, to take the Netflixes of the world that are pushing across Verizon's lines and you know charge a lot more right. for that or or so on. And I mean it, it can actually get ridiculous the way sure. it's structured because if like so on my blog, like yeah. I write about you know ways to yeah like legally watch content without having to pay cable like you know like different streaming services and everything else and podcasts about that they could throttle me yeah absolutely because they don't like what i'm saying yeah and and so what i was gonna say is exactly along those lines right like the only kind of provider that that incentive wouldn't be there for is that eventually if we get startups that are pure play internet service providers right where they don't have content. Um, if we get those, uh, all of a sudden, net neutrality is not as big a concern, right? Like Because well, it just kind of naturally happens. But it's still, it's like if you have that access, you're still dealing, that's only your access in. If somebody else, like if you're providing, if you're, if say I'm buying that provider to, you know, I don't know, provide my content it's can be throttled it can be throttled on the other end is basically what i'm saying yeah i guess that's true i i i just still think that is you're definitely safer going with an isp that isn't connected to basically tv distribution yeah which, if you can find one because then you don't have to worry about it happening to you and that kind of ties into the conversation we had a while back on one of the episodes about municipal internet right right um you know because then you know, you're dealing with an entity where the uh, internet uh, service is completely separate from any kind of content. Right. Well, because, it, yeah, it's provided by... It's provided by the locality. Yeah, the, the infrastructure is put up by the locality. Meanwhile, a lot of these uh, municipal internet services are already dealing with state legislate. Like, there's already laws on the books in certain states that are keeping that from happening. Yeah. So they're fighting it in the courts. If you're getting more, you know, appellate court judges being appointed who are kind of in favor of, you know, deregulation or not regulating these ISPs or not allowing, like, competition to affect them, you know, especially public competition, then you're going to see less municipal internet as a result. You certainly could, right? Like... That's that's the thing that's quirky about this whole issue to me. Well, yeah, judges can do their own thing once they're appointed. Yeah. So there is a little roll of the dice there, but yeah, and it, it's 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 going to be weird, right? It's going to it's it's very hard to predict how anything will will factor out in courts. Oh yeah, the judiciary right. is its own its it, own special beast. I mean, look at Souter. Yeah, Souter was appointed by uh, Bush Senior. Yep, and oh, well, I mean, but Bush Senior's always been a pretty you know moderate. Uh, yeah. Politician for the most part. Yep. Um, but he turned out to be one of the most liberal judges in the court. Yeah. So, and now when I say liberal, I'm saying like the colloquial li- ri- uh, liberal. He's really a strict constructionist, which yeah. turns out to be liberal in its interpretation. T- these days it is, but when you really look at it, he's using court precedent right. <laughs> to make his laws and he's not like legislating from the bench. Yep. But I don't know. It, it switches, I guess, every so often. It does. <laughs> and, and like, so. I think with any of this, you know, time's going to tell. I, I, I do think uh, the point we wanted to make with this, with net neutrality, is that it's something we're going to want to watch, right? Like, this is this is going to be a, a serious time in the Internet's history. Definitely. Because it's – and coming off the tail of, like, like in the past two years, 
um, we've had a lot of victories when it comes to internet freedom. I mean, inter- open internet. Because it, it's, it was getting scary there for a while yeah. when we're looking at the books and we're like, these we have a lot. these We're giving these companies a lot of power. Yeah. They can grab your information. They can do whatever they want with it. They can throttle you based on, you know, what your content is. I mean, if they wanted. Yep. And Comcast, it, this became an issue because Comcast was doing that to Netflix. Oh, and don't forget the secondary issue you were talking about earlier. Allegedly. Well, I mean, right. there's there's a lot of data. They've actually pulled it, and the data shows that something. They were doing it. They were yeah. doing it, but they, I don't know if it's ever been, you know, vetted in a court of law yeah. or anything. I think they settled out, if anything. Yeah. But well, uh, where I was going is that, like, you know, you're talking about, like, the corporate side of it that's a risk, but there's also the, the government side. And that's why I like the privacy, uh, bill you were talking about, you know, so, or I guess it's a rule, but, uh, so much in that if the government requests data about, um, internet traffic, right. Right. All of those affected by that request would have to be notified under the current law or the current rule. Um, well, it's not just that too. It's also like they need to, when you sign up, they need to let you know everything they're going to do with it. Right. So that's the rule. Right. They, if that, that goes away, then they can, you know, cause that's power because, well, it, it is, if there was a, if, if you could, if you have a choice, then you can choose, I'll go with this provider over that provider because they're not going to be, right. you know, hawking my information everywhere. Well, and, and, and again, it's, 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 two things that can happen there, or at least two big ones. The corporation can sell your data, right, to do what, you know, see it as a revenue source, you know, sell it to marketers or do whatever they want with it. Right. The other is how they treat that data upon request of the government to, you know, have it. Right. right, and we saw this. Everybody forgets we saw this a lot in the early days of the Patriot. Oh yeah, right. Like, yeah, there was yeah, it was, there was a, there was a lot of problems in the early days of the Patriot with like, um, I think it was AT and T, but don't quote me on that. Uh, but the internet service providers providing data to the government. Without notification of the people whose data right. it was, you know, they just serve. They just, you know, hey, we need this data. Right, it falls under. Well, then the, there was no real process, and now there there's wasn't. A process, they were saying we, we yeah. and they and they disclose that they are, you know, and 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 so it's it's regimented, and any time, uh, those rules are put in jeopardy, they're all put in jeopardy, right? Like any time you start to uh, skirt a privacy issue in any way, it puts all the others in jeopardy. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, the Patriot Act was just kind of like a, uh, I mean, we were talking about slippery slope, but I mean, yeah, that was like, it, it was all in one go right there. There was right. no slippery slope. No, it was, it was pretty much, yeah, everything is just now. It wasn't a slope. Free it was game. A total drop off. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was, it was written very broadly. Warrantless wiretapping. It was written very, very broadly. Right, right. And then warrantless wiretapping was construed into, oh, we can just, you know, look at the data that's passing over this line, period. And it's all a series of tubes. Exactly. Yeah, Yeah, that tube. It's a bigger tube, you know. We need to listen to that tube. There you go. Ted Stevens. Um, Yeah, so basically, and I don't, I didn't want to doom and gloom this one. Yeah, this is not, uh, so we probably sound a little alarmist. And I'm kind of, I mean. Maybe uh, maybe it's a little bit of an alarm, but it's it's like a light alarm. I'm disheartened. Yeah. I, I mean, because I was excited over all the, you know, I, it felt like some good stuff was happening when it came to, um, you yeah, know, like the future looked pretty bright when it came trending to. Trending in the right direction possibly over the last couple of years. Some competition in the, in the ISP sec uh, industry. And, um, and now it's a little bit, uh, it's murky. It's yeah. mark. It's it's we kind of, you know, on what's gonna on how this is gonna play out. Yeah, and I mean, and obviously for cord cutting and all of the, the other things we tend to talk about, even up to Internet of Things and some of those, it, it, they're they're very real repercussions. Oh yeah, well, I mean, it's the doorway to the internet. 
these ISPs. So it really does affect everything that is part and parcel to the internet. I mean, that includes blockchain, that includes internet of things. Um, innovation, I mean, really is, yeah, you need an open internet. You need an open internet to have, to, to, to have optimal innovation. Yeah. I mean, it is effectively just a method of distributing information really quickly. Right. And because, I mean, anybody these days, and that's what's great about it these days, is anybody can just, you know, start a website or get their voice heard or start a business. It's so easy these days to start a business online. I I sat down. So Dennis and I were kind of spitballing the idea of uh, looking at, uh, voting technology, like mm-hmm. technology that was used, uh, you know, in elections, because we just went through a big one. And I don't know how it was where you guys are, but uh, here in Maryland, it was, it, there were long lines and, you know, it, it, there were a lot of scan cards and stuff. It was, yeah, and that's it was interesting. Thing. It's like, but, I can, you know, I can pay all my bills and, you know, I do it all online. Right? I can, I can, you know, I can do that. I can, I can, I can get my license renewed and everything else. Yeah. And it, you know, it takes a matter of minutes online. But I got to bubble this with a pen. Yeah, but yeah, but when I go vote, it's like, you know, hour if you're lucky. Yeah. And so, <laughs> but where I was going with that story is that, you know, I sat down and I was going to do some research, and within like five minutes, I had what kind of the industry considers like the top three studies ever written on the top in my hands. And I was just reading them. And it's like, that's amazing when you stop and think about like how easy and readily available useful information is right now. Um, So, yeah, so stay tuned on, you know, for that episode. That could be a good one, Uh, you know, assuming we ever, ever decide to do that. Yeah, I think I think that one's coming up soon. I I, I wanted to. I, I didn't want to go I, – I originally said that because I didn't want to go right into an election episode, but then I wound up going right into an election episode. Yeah, so. well, it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of a big deal these days, so uh, it seems appropriate. Because everyone's doing it these days. Everyone's – Those election episodes. Having elections – You put on the iTunes, right. everyone's talking about this uh, this election, you know. There was an election? That's what I heard. I heard the, um, that um, the guy that had the TV show, I heard he won. Uh, Jesse Ventura? No, the other one. Arnold, Schwar- Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> All right, if you can't tell, this show has run out of steam. Yeah, <laughs> so, we're done. <laughs> I'm Dennis Rostaro. And this is Joel Reeves. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening, everybody. Um, one thing we wanted to get to uh, this episode, which kind of slipped through the cracks, um, was the cable box uh, rule that uh, FCC was pushing. We actually you know, did an episode um, on October 10th. So if you want to check that out... Um, kind of goes into the nitty-gritty of what that's all about. Uh, The short of it is um, the FCC wanted to eliminate uh, the proprietary cable boxes, uh, you know, that you guys are all paying ridiculous amounts for per month and um, force cable companies to allow their channels and content to be used on, you know, different devices which you could buy in a store and just own yourself. Um, Sounded great. Probably not going to happen because, you know, Again, as we mentioned before, no new regulations. Actually, the the moratorium. So, um, you know, I mean, it might come. You never know what's going to happen. I mean, today, I mean, I, Mr. Trump just said that uh, there's parts that he likes about Obamacare, and he's not going to repeal it, and he might just amend it. So, who knows? But um, if you want to hear the details on that episode, it was called Cable Boxes and Corruption, and it was released on October 10th. Um, if you have any questions uh, about any of this, send us an email, podcast at groundedreason.com. Uh, you can tweet us at Grounded Reason, check out the Facebook page, hit me up on the blog, or you can even call the voicemail at uh, 650-TALK-GRP. And if you leave your name, then we might even play it on the air and answer your question. So everybody out there, keep an eye on this stuff. If you hear people saying that, you know, net neutrality is oppressive and bad, it's just simply not true. It actually benefits all of us uh, because it keeps the Internet open, fair and, you know, competitive, which is really what we all want. So uh, if you hear some of that, you know, talk coming down the pike or that rhetoric, 
uh, shut it down. You know, write your congressman, uh, pitch a fit, uh, air your grievances, uh, and, and try to keep the internet free and open for all of us. Uh, see you next time. <laughs>